Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anupama Chaudhary Devgan and I'll be discussing your physiology questions. Now let's look at the first question. It says a 12 year old boy presents with proximal muscle weakness and is found to have a mutation of the gene that codes for dystrophin. Genetic alterations in dystrophin lead to a progressive muscular weakness because dystrophin provides structural support to the sarcolemma by binding which of the following proteins. So uh, dystrophin is a part of what is known as the dystroglycan sarcoglycan complex. Dystroglycan sarcoglycan complex is also known as these are also known as sarcolemal proteins. Sarcolemal proteins. Now, um, uh, as far as these, uh, what is the organization of these sarcolemal proteins? Let's try and see them. Now, if this is the sarcolemma, sarcolemma, now here is actin, which is present, the double stranded actin. Now, attaching the actin to the sarcolemma is a rod like protein. This is a rod like protein, and this rod like protein is known as dystrophin. Dystrophin attaches the actin, it attaches the actin to another sarcolemmal protein, and this sarcolemmal protein is known as the beta dystroglycan. Beta dystroglycan is linked to another sarcolemmal protein which is called alpha dystroglycan and alpha dystroglycan is linked with a protein in the extracellular matrix and that is laminin. This alpha dystroglycan is linked with the myrosin unit of laminin but laminin is not a sarcolemmal protein. It is a protein which is present in the extracellular matrix. Now, there are a, a few more sarcolemmal proteins. Let's have, uh, uh, there is another one which is called syntropin. This is a globular protein which is called syntropin. Another sarcolemmal protein and that is sarcospan. Sarcospan. All of these are sarcolemmal proteins, dystrophin, syntropin, dystroglycan, sarcospan. There is another one and that is known as uh, sarcoglycan, sarcoglycan. And sarcoglycan, there are four subtypes. There is alpha, beta, gamma, delta. What are these? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta. These are your sarco, sarcoglycan. So these are your sarcolemmal proteins. Dystrophin, syntrophin, dystroglycan, sarcospan and sarcoglycan. Now uh, these sarcolemmal proteins are believed to uh, be involved, these are not contractile proteins, they are believed to be involved in amplification of the force which is generated by actinomycin. So that is why whenever there is a mutation of any one of these proteins, it results in muscle weakness. And the commonest uh, congenital problem which is seen because of, because of absence of one of these proteins and that is when, when dystrophin is absent, it gives rise to a severe proximal muscle weakness and the condition is known as Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. If dystrophin is reduced, it gives rise to um, a condition which is known as Becker's muscular dystrophy. And um, a mutation of sarcoglycan, it gives rise to what is known as the limb girdle dystrophies. Limb girdle dystrophies. Yes, so these are your common dystrophies, three common dystrophies. So there are almost 20 different types of dystrophies which are known because of mutation of these sarcolemmal proteins. Now the question is a simple one. It says dystrophin provides structural support to the sarcolemma by binding which of the following proteins? It binds the actin to the dystroglycan. Let's look at the next question. It says forming an anastomosis of the jejunum with the stomach. A patient pres presents with dis discomfort after meals including weakness, dizziness and sweating. The symptoms of dumping syndrome. Now dumping syndrome is something which is seen whenever there is a 
a removal of the part of the stomach or if the jejunum is anastomosed to the stomach, this gives rise to something known as dumping syndrome. And dumping syndrome, the symptoms of dumping syndrome are due to a hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia and uh, these are typically seen, uh, the weakness, the dizziness, sweating, these are all indicative of hypoglycemia. So decreased blood glucose level. What actually happens here is uh, because a portion of the stomach has been removed, there is very rapid movement of uh, the gastric chime into the small intestine and so a very rapid rise in blood glucose level which causes a very rapid increase in insulin and therefore a rapid fall resulting in hypoglycemia and that is uh, these symptoms are attributable to the hypoglycemia. Another, uh, another thing which can happen in dumping syndrome is hypotension. The reason is because hyperosmolal meals hyperosmolal gastric chine enters into the small intestine and the moment it enters into the small intestine it enters into the small intestine this will cause the movement of water from the walls of the small intestine into the lumen of the small intestine and that results in so there is a movement of water that results in a hypovolemia and hypotension, right? And that also will give rise to uh, these symptoms of dumping syndrome. So there will be movement of water resulting in hypovolemia and hypotension. Right. So is it, um, is it going to be due to uh, increased blood pressure? No. Increased blood volume? No. Decre decreased secretion? No. In fact, there is an increased secretion of insulin. Let's look at the next question. It says the spirometry tracing given below was recorded from a 30-year-old woman. Expiratory reserve volume is which of the following? Now, what is A? A is inspiratory reserve volume. What is B? B is the vital capacity or also known as forced vital capacity. What is D? D is the residual volume. What is C? C is your functional residual capacity. So what is expiratory reserve volume? Expiratory reserve volume is this. The volume of air expired forcefully over and above a tidal expiration with maximum effort. This is your expiratory reserve volume. So what is my best answer? Uh, is it going to be B minus A? B plus D is total lung capacity? No, C minus D. C minus D is functional residual capacity minus residual volume, which is going to be ERB. So my answer here is C minus Let's look at the next question. A patient with congestive cardiac failure presents with elevated JVP, peripheral edema and ascites. Investigations show elevated levels of B, A and B. What is the role of A and B? A, atrial natriuretic peptide. Yes. Now, atrial natriuretic peptide will cause a natriuresis. Natriuresis means there is increased loss of sodium in the urine. So that it does by decreasing the sodium reabsorption. And where does it act? It acts on the collecting duct. It decreases the sodium reabsorption in the collecting duct. A and B also acts at the glomerulus. It causes a mesangial. It causes a mesangial cell relaxation. And once that one, when there is a mesangial cell relaxation, it also increases the GFR. Right? And it acts, A and B also acts on the collecting duct to decrease the sodium reabsorption. Let's look at the next question. It says, which of the following waves of, uh, the waves of JVP is recorded in isovolumetric contraction phase? Now, JVP has got multiple positive and multiple negative waves. The positive waves are A, C, V and negative waves are X descent and Y descent. So A wave is due to atrial contraction. This is due to atrial contraction. 
and A wave of the JVP occurs therefore in the second rapid filling phase. In the second rapid filling phase. Then the C wave. C wave is due to, so if this is the A wave, then you have the C wave. C wave is due to bulging of the closed tricuspid valves into the right atrium during isovolumetric contraction phase. This is during isovolumetric contraction phase. And that's exactly the question which I've asked you. So the answer to this question is C. C is followed by the X descent. What is X descent due to? X descent is due to a downward pull of the closed tricuspid valve into the right ventricle during the phase of ejection. So this will be in the ejection phase. Then this is followed by another positive wave which is called the V wave. And V wave is because of venous filling of the right atrium venous filling of the right atrium just before opening of the tricuspid valve. At this point when the tricuspid valve opens, now you may get the Y descent. Y descent is due to a rapid flow of blood from the right atrium into the right ventricle. So this will be in the first rapid filling phase. So my answer to this question, B. So these are your questions in the grand test. My email ID is Dr. Anupama Devkan at gmail.com. Any queries regarding the questions that we have discussed today, please feel free to send a mail to me and I will try and sort it out. Thank you so much and all the best.